What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. I am once again joined by Dr. Jesse Morse of the Fantasy Doctors. Every Thursday, we're going to go deep into the injury report, talking about players that are banged up, talking about guys that were hurt maybe in the previous week or have been hurt for a couple weeks, and maybe they're working their way back into the lineups. You know, how healthy are they? Are they at 100%? Can we throw them into our fantasy lineups? That's what every Thursday is going to be all about. Dr. Morse, I know it's been probably wild because as football does, it hurts a lot of guys, and that means a lot more work for you. So we have week one in the books. How are we feeling after it? Do you feel like there's more injuries this week as opposed to previous years or, you know, just the general number? No, I feel like the, the beat writers and teams are being a little more transparent, which is helpful. Either that or the reporters are asking better questions or more questions. We have a better idea of who's banged up and, and what body part it is. They're really focusing on, you know, Deshaun Watson. They're going in the tent. They're like looking at him like, hey, is he coming into the tent? Like, is he coming out? What is he favoring? Like, You're they're really media. freaking out about it, which is makes my life easier but it's hard I feel like there's always a million injuries and then you look back and it's like hey it's about the same amount yeah I'm sure it just gets so hectic as soon as things happen because we you know we deal with minor ones for a long time and then they start hitting and shit gets crazy one of the craziest ones we've heard breaking news pretty much within the last hour we are filming this on Wednesday evening so we just heard about Hunter Henry now I, I don't know like the details too much of it all I know is that it's Wednesday which means waiver wire is already processed. So if you did not grab Waller, if you did not grab Hawkinson or Mark Andrews or one of those guys, and you were a Hunter Henry owner thinking you were safe, which I fall into that category, we're not safe anymore. Now, there are conflicting timelines as, as from what I've heard. Supposedly, this is a very serious injury, and you're going to go into, I guess, a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. There's like timelines of four to six weeks, but it sounds like it might be, uh, it could possibly be a season ender. So this was some big facts. Yeah, first off, I decided to stay in my, my clinic outfit for the haters. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I'm rocking some, some, some serious pants uh, for, you, for you haters. Those are beautiful. Yeah, they are. Um, and they're comfortable <laughs> as hell. So, uh, Hunter Henry, I, I, this dropped when I was driving home. And I'm like, whoa, like this is a big deal, like real big deal. First of all, it's the opposite knee of his – recent ACL reconstruction. So now he's got two bad legs. What is this injury? You have the lower leg bone, you have the upper leg bone. This is basically taking a chunk off of the bottom, the top part of the lower leg bone. Yikes. This is the foundation of your knee. This is what JJ Watt had a couple of years ago in a very serious form. This is also what we found out Aaron Rodgers had last year after he had that injury early in the season and kind of played through it. Right. My suspicion is his was super, super mild and they didn't even really realize it until after the season. Basically the outer part of the knee is much more common than the inner part of the knee for this injury. If there is any separation in that piece of bone that is off that surgery, I mean, you mean like three millimeters, which is not much. If this is just a little bit of a, a bump, the protocol is eight to 12 weeks immobilized. I don't know where they're getting four to six weeks. I, I, I so can't figure out no, unless no they're not scenario. telling us the story. Yeah, so there's no scenario realistically based on the information that we have at hand that four to six weeks would make sense. Then it's not a, a tibia plateau fracture. Okay. I mean, it, it can't be because you wouldn't know, knowingly bring him back. My suspicion is this may be what we call an avulsion fracture. So maybe he suffered an LCL or MCL injury which is the ligaments that run north to south, one on the lateral, outer side, medial, inside. And it took a little bit of a piece of the bone off. That technically you could describe as a tibial plateau fracture if it pulls it off from the bottom. But that's not really a true one. That's kind of, a, a, I guess, a way to describe it. That's not true, though. So based on the information, if it's, if it's truly a tibial plateau fracture, he's done for the year. Okay. If it's not a tibial plateau, then – I, I, it's kind of hard to go gauge by what we're talking about. All right. Well, we'll find out more within the coming days. I'm assuming, yeah. I mean, we're like best case scenario. He's still missing, you know, a month, if not more yeah. of the season for sure. So you're going to have to be looking on your wire. So why don't we kind of skip down the injury list and talk about tight ends? Because I have one streamer in mind because most of the guys that were good streamers that you could have picked up are probably gone by this point. Yeah. We have Jordan, Jordan Reed, right? We know that he had his seventh documented concussion a few weeks ago and he is still not practicing. He's still in the protocol which tells me that they're probably taking it very, very, very slow with him. Vernon Davis is a guy who has historically mm -hmm. filled in pretty well for him. He, he mm -hmm. scored a touchdown on a crazy, crazy play last week. 
So I'm just shooting off the top of my head right now because he's someone I'm going to be have to like target in my, my free agent pool because I'm, I just lost Hunter Henry and there was nobody on the wire for me. So, you know, Jordan Reed probably out again, the fact that he's not out of the concussion protocol and this is yeah. obviously a high number. So Vernon Davis could be a target. I, I'm looking at my wire right now just to get an idea of what my wire looks like. Um, this is a 12 team. Uh, you start a bunch of players, so it's pretty deep. Yeah. Uh, Doyle, Fant, Godert, Gazeki, Witten, Eifert. It's ugly. It's ugly, man. It's None ugly. Of those, half of those guys aren't full time players. The other half are fucking rookies. The other guys are. Yeah. Strange. Fant didn't. Fant, Fant look didn't look very good at all. Doyle. I mean, he had one catch for 20 yards, and he's playing about half the snaps. Godert, I love his talent, but, I mean, yeah. when are they going to pass to him? And they have so many weapons there. Yeah, you can't take him seriously. Gazeki, I don't want anything to do with Miami. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe they get lucky and they throw to him, but eh. Witten, I, I mean, Witten look, actually looked pretty good. He caught a touchdown. Uh, but can you depend on a touchdown every three targets? No. So I'm at, least, at this point, I'm, you know, I'm praying for Vernon Davis to fall to me because we also have other injuries. You have Greg Olson, right, who has been – trying so hard to battle back from all these foot injuries that he's had in recent years. And now he's dealing with his back injury. He plays on Thursday night. So if you're watching this, he's playing tonight and you'll probably already have a good sense whether or not he's playing. You know, I, that seems like an injury that's probably caused by some of these previous injuries that he's had, maybe he tweaked it, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Greg Olson, I mean, this could turn into something serious. So it's just really just another name to throw out there. And I know you have OJ Howard on the list. I didn't even realize that he had, tweaked his ankle during the game I only saw this last night I was watching I turned on NFL Network and I hadn't seen it any anywhere else between him and Ronald Jones and it popped up in, at the ticker at the bottom it said because it's talking about this Thursday night game and it said OJ Howard ankle full meaning practice in full and then it said Ronald Jones toe practice in full which is obviously great news because that was a Tuesday report off on a third Thursday game. They usually yeah. don't practice on Wednesdays. I had not heard anything about that. So, I, I'm, But that was the first time I heard of it. Normally they don't have to release a report till Wednesday, but a Thursday obviously is a different situation. I guess they're playing. We don't, I don't, we don't know anything about it. I couldn't find any information at all. The beat reporters didn't have anything. Maybe they have something now. Um, the, the Tampa Bay uh, local kind of news network sports guys didn't say anything about it at all yesterday. So I'm, I'm not seeing anything on, on Twitter. So, I mean, like, if you're seeing this Thursday afternoon or something, like maybe be safe and grab someone off the wire if you have O.J. Howard. But from what I know, he should be good yeah. to go. So I'm not worried about it. One guy to keep a, an eye on, though, if, if Greg Olson misses time, there's this kid behind him, Ian Thomas, man. Yeah. He is an athletic freak, and he kind of broke out down the – uh, stretch last year over the first, over the last like four or five games, he was averaging five or six receptions, 65 yards, scored a couple times. I mean, the guy is uh, he's very athletic. He's in the 71st percentile for speed score, really good burst score, agility score, whatever. So if he's out, Ian Thomas should get a full slate of snaps. Um, so he's another guy that you could possibly stream and it doesn't really look like Greg Olson is trending in the right direction there. I think he plays. I don't know how effective he's going to be, uh, but I, I, and, and there's a reason why I'm not very high in Greg Olson this year because I feel like it's only a matter of time before he's going to get injured and banged up and not play this year. Yeah. He's just, his body's failed him and his age doesn't help. And same thing with Jordan Reed. Um, I, I think Ian Thomas is a, is a sneaky play. Atkins got a couple looks the other night for uh, with, with Houston. Yeah. I don't know. They're going to have more weapons but, back. I mean, they'll have, they have fuller, full strength. Kenny Stills, Duke Johnson, yeah. they'll have Kiki QT. So, they practice, so – Watson's coming back in a couple weeks. Herndon will be back in a couple weeks, but no one right now. Yeah, it's rough out there if you miss on today's waiver wire. Let's talk about Disley. Disley had a new injury in his knee. Yeah, not that anyone probably rostered him at this point, but just kind of shitty to see after that uh, nice start he had to his career. Let's talk about quarterbacks. So we have Patrick Mahomes who rolled up on his ankle. Um, I mean, he came back in and played the rest of the game, so there's Mm -hmm. probably zero concern that he misses any time. Maybe Mm -hmm. it limits his mobility. I still think that, like, even if he can't get out of the pocket, he's still throwing up 350 passing yards and three touchdowns routinely. So nothing to worry about here, right? Yeah, no, he um, – I saw the play live. Um, I, I was a little concerned about his knee because his knee kind of buckled in. And depending on whether or not his MCL gave out, he would have had issues with it. It sounds like it didn't, so he got to go away with it. Um, he rolled his ankle or st- somebody like, uh, stepped on it, rolled it, however exactly happened. They said today – Reed said today he's good to go. He's no concerns. Practice today. So – not overly concerned if he was a mobile quarterback like a Cam or like a Kyler or something, you know, Josh Allen maybe I'd be a little more concerned, but not overly worried. This is a, probably a mild uh, lateral ankle sprain. They will ice him up. They will tape him up. They'll do ultrasound. 
um, and they'll continue to wrap them if they need to during the game, not worried about the Mahomes at all. Breaking news, do not sit Patrick Mahomes, homies, and home Mets. Let's talk about Baker Mayfield. So something happened with his hand. He got hurt in the fourth quarter, Mm -hmm. and he absolutely killed me because he's a a starting quarterback of mine in a minus four point per interception league. And I ended up losing by about 14 points. So those three interceptions at the end of the game absolutely killed me. The team didn't look good. The offensive line got a lot of pre- let a lot of pressure through on Baker. So that's a whole other concern just from like an analysis standpoint. But from the hand, and I know he got like x-rays, I believe they came back negative. Yep. Uh, was it on the throwing hand or was it on the offhand? It, they, I don't even think they clarified, to be honest with you. I don't know when this – there's a couple plays it could have happened on. There was one he got kind of got pummeled in the, in the end zone. I think it was for a safety or close to a safety. Uh, we don't have any details. They didn't look very good. Uh, I had OB, OBJ in a bunch of leagues, both DFS and regular, and he – I mean, he did okay, but not – to the expected, I expected. I think Tennessee um, is a very underrated defense. So, I mean, we'll have to see. It's, it's really tough in the beginning of the year, especially when it comes to these streaming positions, because we don't really know how well a, a defense is going to perform, right, until like four no. weeks into the season. So, Tennessee is a, a team that a lot of people are like, ah, they're going to they're gonna suck, whatever. A lot of people are like, oh, I really like their defense to be sneaky good. Like, we're not actually going to know which side is right until about four or five weeks into the season. So, it's tough to get a really clear – takeaway from Baker now he did practice on Tuesday so it seems like he should be ready to go he's a tough kid the fact that we don't really know if it's throwing hand or not we can't really tell if it's going to be limiting him but for right now he seems like just based on the performance he's more of uh he's probably not a top 12 play this week I'd have a lot of guys going over him if you're in a super flex league obviously he's going to be in your lineup because of the amount that you invested into him in the draft but I'm do you own Monday Baker? night right they got the Monday night game Yes, I believe they do. Um, so then you you're really kind of stuck because you kind of have to make your decision, obviously, before that. They are playing – hold on, that's Let me make sure because if their practice report's out on Tuesday, maybe they don't – maybe they aren't playing. Yeah, they're playing the Jets on Monday night. So, okay. obviously, he has an extra day. I think we'll really know by Thursday uh, at practice, maybe Friday practice, uh, of exactly where they stand. If, if his, he still has the same zip, if he looks like he's not favoring it, then – rock and roll they really need to bounce back because they didn't look good at all I don't know how they what they did with their line they traded their best offensive lineman in the middle of the season you know I'm in the middle of the preseason or early in the season uh and now now they're obviously struggling so it's like I don't know it's unfortunate because this team has so much potential yeah again I mean we'll see what Tennessee's really like because it's possible I mean Cameron Wake just won the defensive player of the week so them adding Cameron Wake to the defensive line looks like a fucking masterpiece offseason move and could have really elevated the entire defense. And this, this could truly end up being one of the elite defenses in the league. We don't know until, you know, a little later on into the season. Um, you know, we have Patrick Mahomes' counterpart, Tyree Kill, who, you know, he, he got hurt in this game. And at first I was like, ah, he's fine because, you know, Jalen Ramsey and him got in a scuffle. Tyree Kill went to go after him in the game. And then right after he was like, all right, you know, I'm not going to fight Jalen Ramsey. He like pulled up and you could tell that he was in some pain. Now we're hearing reports that he's probably going to be out anywhere from like four to six weeks. And I'm in like, I'm in a predicament where I have a league that I own Hunter Henry. I own Tyree kill and I own Melvin Gordon. So it's like my entire bench is getting used up by guys. Like I don't have seven IR spots. So it's getting tricky to keep track of all these guys that are going to be out for so long Luckily, I have Sammy Watkins in that league. But, like, from what you know with the Tyreek Hill injury, you know, how nervous are you from a season-long standpoint? So, a couple things with this injury. First off, people need to understand how big of a deal this injury is. Okay. If that bone got pushed another one to two centimeters, there's a good chance he could have died on the field. Holy shit. Okay. So, what, what happened? So, you have your collarbones right here, your clavicles. The collarbones meet the sternum of the breastbone right there in the middle, and each of them kind of connect almost like a, like a, like a Lego set. Okay. What happens is that breastbone, that sternum, is there to protect the, uh, the trachea, the, all the blood vessels that go to and from the heart, very large blood vessels, literally right behind it. So – what happened was the, uh, the clavicle, the, the collarbone, it doesn't sound like it fractured. It dislocated. Instead of popping out towards, you know, towards the front of his chest, it popped behind the, the breastbone, compressing those blood vessels. If it happened to have slashed one of those blood vessels, that's literally going to fill up his entire chest with blood, and that's it. That's all she wrote. 
So that's how serious this injury is. This is one of the true, few true orthopedic emergencies where the orthopedic surgeon won't even start until there is a cardiothoracic surgeon in the room, in the OR. Because if there is a blood vessel or something that is being compressed, they have to address that before they even touch the sternum. So thankfully, it was not as serious as it could have been. How much pain was he in when it happened? Oh, this is really painful. Yeah. This is like ridiculously painful because I had a girl maybe two or three months ago who did this, popped it up from the front and I moved her arm. She was holding it kind of like this yeah. and I moved her arm this way and she literally screamed and my entire clinic heard it. Like it's, it's this that painful uh, because basically the, the clavicle is a lever. So when you move the shoulder, it pops out and it's supposed to be flush. So instead of being flush, it's popped back. So basically what they had to do was they had to take a pair of medical pliers and move it out. But the issue is, this is what, and this is the timeline issue, is that because they're not doing surgery, the ligaments that hold this bone in place yeah. are torn. That's the only way to get it back. That's the only way it happened. Okay, that makes the sense. The problem is they're not putting any screws, they're not putting any plates. So there's gonna be some scar tissue, but who's to say that this doesn't, he didn't get hit again and it pops back in. Mm -hmm. That's the concern I have. The only player that we know that this happened to in the NFL, for this exact same injury, was Danny Amendola back in 2012 with the Rams, way back when. Okay. And obviously, he's continued to play, so he got lucky and he's been doing good. You can do it anteriorly, pop in the front. That's much more common. You can have a sprain. That's also very more common and very painful. Best case scenario, six weeks. He's going to need to get hit and see how he does. If he takes a catch like this, uh, the same arm, uh, catches the ball, takes a hit, and pops it back out, he's going to be back to where he was the other day. Shit. So this, there's no easy way to evaluate this. This is a very significant injury, and I'm quite astonished. So owners, that, yeah, so owners should definitely be way more pessimistic than optimistic oh, yeah. when it comes to the timetable. So they should be – I'm going to be looking to sell probably. Sell, 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 sell. Sell somebody's upside. Oh, he'll be back in four weeks. Okay. No. No. He, if he's back in four weeks, this is the – he got the luckiest you will ever be. Okay. This is a very big deal, unfortunately. You hate yeah. to see it. That is. sucks, yeah, because I, I have a lot of people asking me, like, what do I do with Sammy Watkins? Do I sell him high right now, or do I ride that wave? And I'm like, honestly, you ride that wave for another, like, four, five, six, seven weeks and get and, and collect those Ws, and then maybe, best case scenario, Terry Kill is back in his role doing yeah. this. But it sounds like, yeah, we have to be very uh, cautious when it comes to Terry Kill. So I'm about to I send mean, my fucking trade offers right after this video. Yeah, I mean, Hardman, uh, my suspicion is Hardman's going to get a lot of looks. Thomas will get a lot of looks. Uh, Watkins, obviously, you saw what he can do. Kelsey's obviously going to get a, a, a little slight uptick. Yeah. As, as long as Kelsey or uh, Watkins can stay healthy, you saw how dominant he is. Yeah. But he's had his own injury history. So, you, you, you know, you got to be careful here. Craziness. All right. Well, let's move forward to another big time wide receiver that you probably drafted right around the same spot. Do you just miss you, sir? Now, he suffered this toe injury at the end of the game. Uh, this week supposedly everything we've heard is that it's very very minor it's not serious whatsoever but toes seem like something that can you know be a little tricky when it comes to wide receivers right they can end up developing into a more mm -hmm. turf toe or something like that now if you have juju mm -hmm. on your team it seems like you're gonna have to play him pretty much they're in a pretty good spot where they're they're in a good like comeback mode where they had a real yeah. shitty first week and they're gonna be in a better spot against uh, Seattle so it should be a better passing performance from their team but with Juju like are you nervous that he's going to be less than 100% for this game there's a couple reasons why I'm a little concerned about you Juju but I'm also excited about him it's kind of a weird situation okay. the toe definitely concerns me if he got lucky this is super mild and we're really not going to worry about it okay. but remember that AJ Green had potentially the same injury last year before he re-injured it again and then ended yeah. up having to go to surgery. So don't write off uh, toe injuries as mild because they can be detrimental, especially big toe. Um, the other part of it is that we know how dominant, or you should know how dominant the, uh, the Patriots uh, DBs are, uh, in particular uh, when they were basically shutting him down, uh, Gilmore. Yeah, I'm so, not surprised by that week one dud yeah. at all. 
Not you at should all. you shouldn't be. I mean, once the, the game was out of control, then you started to see Juju kind of you know take you know be more effective. Seattle they just let the Red Rocket throw for over 400 yards for the one of the only times in his career with a very limited staff. You know, my suspicion is Seattle is going to get thrown on again. I really like their matchup because Se- uh, Seattle has a chance to kind of play spoiler here, but I, I highly doubt that the Steelers are going to roll over. The Steelers are what ten and two in their last twelve home openers, like. They they have a tendency to show up. I like Juju this week, but until I, I I'll start him. Obviously, I just may not be as high on him in DFS uh, because of that. Because I have the luxury of just saying no. But I have him in several leagues, and as of right now, there's no one that has his upside. Yeah. So hopefully, he kind of comes away from the game unscathed, no setbacks or anything like that, and then we can move forward, yeah. clear head, and everything is good there. Let's talk about Sterling Shepard. He's in the concussion protocol. So is. Uh, Dontrell Hilliard. So, I mean, neither of them have practiced yet. That is the Browns backup running back that vultured Nick Chubb that I'm mm-hmm. sure pissed a lot of you guys off. Um, <laughs> not much to talk about here. I don't think either of them are practicing or out of the concussion protocol. So, do you have any you know updates or anything important to throw they, in there? Uh, they technically can't clear the protocol yet, the true protocol, because it's a five-day protocol and they haven't, it hasn't been five days yet. Uh, best case scenario, um, they will clear it by Friday. Um, and they'll be able to play on Sunday or Monday for the Browns. Right. Um, they are at significant risk for a re-injury, for a re-concussion, uh, but everyone's different. About 70 to 80% of sports-related concussions resolve in 7 to 10 days for adults. So they fit the window. It's possible, but you re- you'll know by Saturday, honestly. You'll know by Saturday. If, if they're not out of the protocol Saturday, then they're, they're not going to play. Okay, so we have those two guys possibly sitting out, maybe 50-50, maybe worse than that. I would just throw a quick caveat in there. Same thing with Juju. If for some reason something weird happens with Juju and he ends up missing time, the guy that benefits the most from that is James Washington because he plays that exact role. He's a guy like Juju who doesn't succeed very well off of man and press coverage, but he would be like the flanker and move around a lot. So you might say like Moncrief gets a boost or Deontay Johnson, but those guys stay on the outside, whereas James Washington would probably – finally get to put his skills on display. So if there's one guy I want in there behind Juju, it's like right now it wouldn't be James Washington as the two behind him. It'd be Moncrief. But if something happened to Juju, it'd be Washington. Sterling Shepard, you don't really want too many pieces of that passing game. Obviously, Evan Ingram's going to eat. You have Cody Latimer behind him, who I think had seven or eight targets. He had a ton of air yards, which was good to see. And the Giants were kind of throwing the ball down the field a little bit. But I'm probably just not divesting in anything in this passing game. Behind Shepard, yeah. Antrell Hilliard. I don't know, maybe more passing work for Nick Shell. They have Dearness Johnson, who uh, you're not, you know, even thinking about picking up outside of like a 20 team league. So um, just some quick notes. Now, Mike Williams, I don't know the severity of this knee injury. I didn't look too much into it. You, we we you don't. Know, we, they, we, they haven't said a damn thing. Damn. Nothing. Zero. I don't have any information. I, I People ask me to do a video. I'm like, I don't have anything to go on. I can speculate, but I it's awful. I, I'd like to have something, but. All this does is confirm uh, this two con- major parts of their offense. This confirms that, yeah, Keenan Allen is going to be a top three fantasy wide receiver moving forward without Hunter Henry, possibly without Mike Williams. I'm kind of scavenging Twitter. Eckler? Right you Eckler. saw what Eckler did. Oh, hell yeah. I own Eckler in a, a, a very high portion of my season long leagues. And he went, I had him and McCaffrey going to one of my leagues, the top two scoring running backs last week. And that's, oh yeah, they, yeah, they did great. They did real great. So I'm, yeah, I'm hoping I mean, Melvin I'm, sits, man. I'm hoping Melvin sits for fucking 12 weeks or the entire yeah, six to eight is currently what they're saying. Um, we'll find out when we, when it comes to it, the, um, but, but definitely, um, we don't know anything about uh, Mike Williams. If I, I'll, hopefully by Thursday or Friday, uh, later tomorrow or, or Friday, I'll have more. I usually drop a, a large uh, injury report uh, on my Twitter feed sometime around Friday, Friday night sometimes um, when, when we have more information in terms of practices and everything. And, and, and you know, on the other podcasts that I'm on, uh, the Fantasy Doctors, uh, we talk about even more in depth than here. Uh, we'll, we'll go through that if more information's out. And then Pat Mayo show on Friday night. We also, I also talk about it there. So between those two, it'll get covered. I just don't know when it's going to drop and what else we know. Yeah. Just make sure you're following Dr. Jesse Morse on Twitter. He'll, uh, he'll tweet out nuggets when he finds out more information about a lot of the players. So you could obviously consume his content through those avenues, but Twitter is usually the place yeah. to go for, for breaking news. I mean, when you're looking at this Chargers team without Hunter Henry, possibly without Mike Williams, it's, it's the Eckler show. I mean, at wide receiver, they have Travis Benjamin, Dontrell Inman. It's not really guys I want to invest in. 
I had someone tweet at me, is Virgil Green worth the pickup? Uh, mm. Absolutely not. I mean, he's 31. He's been in the league for nine years. He's played a full 16 one time. His career high in receiving yards for a season, 237 yards, 22 catches. He's never had more than one touchdown in a season. He has four career total receiving – or five career total receiving touchdowns. He's not going to give you what, you know, Hunter Henry did or what Antonio Gates years ago did. So I'm look so out. disappointed. I'm so disappointed. I know. It's really, it's really, 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 really shitty. Now, let's talk about some of these running backs. This is a pretty shitty week for running back injuries. The top guy that most guys are concerned about is probably Joe Mixon because he was borderline first-round pick mm-hmm. and uh, definitely didn't return value in week one. Mm-mm. The hope is that this is very, very minor as well. He's dealing with a very mild ankle sprain. With Mixon, they're day-to-day. They say he's hopeful he could play. Um, when he's not on the field, Geo takes 100% of the touches, 100% of the snaps. So it's, it seems like they're optimistic about Mixon being on the field. So it's very possible that that happens. If I had to guess, maybe I, I think they probably end up suiting him up and play him at less than, you know, his normal snap load. Maybe they split the snaps 50, 50 and he's kind of ineffective and you see him off on the sideline for drives at a time. And it looks like it's a very frustrating situation, which means the passing offense in Cincinnati should once again, see a ton of volume there. Like they did last week, any uh, other notes to add to Joe Mixon other than, you know, we've heard it's very mild and they wanted to play. So MRI confirmed a very mild lateral ankle sprain, classic traditional ankle sprain, which is what it looked like. Got very lucky. Here's my concern. He honestly should take a couple of weeks off to get this right, okay. but they're probably not going to. So, so here's the issue that frustrated me last year, and, and, and this indirectly correlates. This is kind of what happened to Breida last year, and he kept trying to go through it and go through it, and he was like, yeah, he's good, but he never was like 100%. Then he would like leave the game early, and then he would come back again the next game, and he would leave, like play half the game, and he would yeah. leave again. So if these guys are just smart about it and just say, all right, I'll take two weeks off. I'll get this back to 100%, and then I'll be out of rock and roll. That's how it should be. Unfortunately, I doubt it's how it's going to be. So they just paid Gio uh, a, dec- a pretty good salary for running back, considering a backup. So my suspicion is they're probably going to do the 50-50 thing, like the, the thing you talked about, which is unfortunate. So you kind of have to start him, as, even as a flex, but – I don't feel good about it. I really no, don't. I definitely don't. I mean, especially if he ends up with a breed of situations, like you invested in Mixon to be the every down guy there. And clearly now that they just paid Gio and with this ankle injury, it doesn't seem like he's going to be at least like for the foreseeable future. And Gio is a guy that averages like 18 to 20 touches when Mixon is off the field. So if you have extra bench space on your roster and it's before the Sunday kickoffs, Throw Geo on there because anything could happen with Mixon. And if something does happen to Mixon, obviously he's at a much higher re-injury risk than any other player that you just luckily shoot for. Something happens to Mixon, you have a plug-and-play high-end RB2 on your roster for free right there. So before Sunday's games, look at your rosters, see if Geo's available, which I think he's going to be available in a lot of leagues because the reports we hear are that it's minor and Mixon's going to play. But um, wouldn't feel good if you're a Mixon owner. I would look to add Geo. Now, if you are a Darius Geis owner, Obviously, you're feeling terrible about this. He is dealing with a meniscal tear in the opposite knee, not the ACL knee that he had spent so much time rehabbing with. Um, This is obviously terrible news for season long. It makes him basically droppable. He's going to be gone for I'm not sure how many weeks what the timetable is, but it was literally just him and Chris Thompson. So he finally had the backfield basically to himself to run the ball. Now he's going to be out. So it's going to be Adrian Peterson, Chris Thompson. Chris Thompson looks to benefit a lot from this this new given role. I mean, we saw what he did in a bigger role a couple of years ago before he got hurt. He was a PPR monster. He had, I think, seven catches in this last game. They're going to have a lot of bad script here in, uh, in in Washington in terms of, you know, running backs for uh, PPR like Chris Thompson, right? So uh, he, in my eyes, benefits the most. Darius Geis, like, what do we know about the timetable? And do you have any faith in him, like, coming back this year? And being- so if you and you you've you had access to my article on him, I told pretty much everybody I want nothing to do with Geis. Right. It's not because he's not talented. The kid is a very violent runner. I like the way he runs. The problem is I don't like people coming back on their first year of ACL. McKinnon, look what happened to him. Look what happened to Dalvin Cook last year. Didn't really do much at all. The first year is hard. He is at increased risk on the opposite knee because you're putting more stress on it because that rehab knee is not 100%, right. either mentally or physically. He suffered a meniscal tear. 
a la DK Metcalf, uh, Chris Carson, Sony Michelle. Those are the three that have had them in the past year that come to mind. We don't know the severity. There was a recent report about an hour ago that said we still don't know the severity. Don't be surprised, or you will be, but I'm telling you, you shouldn't be. I are. If he injured his ACL on the other knee. Oof. Okay. This is, this is one of those little shady things where they're not being forthcoming. Best case scenario, he has a mild meniscal tear and he's out a couple of weeks. They're saying he could potentially come back this week. That's not smart. Even if it's very mild, it's not smart. That's ridiculous. There's no way. Yeah. They, they have to be, this training staff has to be smart. I mean, obviously they've already had a bunch of issues. They can't, they can't risk this kid already. And personally, I don't want anything to do with him. I like his talent. I just don't want anything to do with him this year. This is Thompson looked fantastic. I was a huge fan of Thompson before he got injured last year. And I think of the year before as well. Uh, Adrian Peterson is likely who we thought he was. I mean, he's going to get back and he's going to probably run for a hundred yards and over 20 carries or whatever. Yeah. He'll have, he'll have a game or two like that this year for sure. But uh, unfortunate about guys, uh, they may IR him. I know they're waiting for a second opinion. They may be sending him down to Andrews to for, to, to look at his knee. I don't I don't know what they're doing, but um, all I know is that um, I don't have any interest in Geis. I don't have any faith in Geis. If you own him, sell high on whatever potentially he has. Okay. I just I, I don't. I, I, He's probably comfortable at this point, to be honest. If you need the roster spot, so. Not good news for guys. Also not good news for Tevin Coleman. He's got the high ankle sprain giving way to Matt Breida in that backfield mm -hmm. and Raheem Moster, possibly Jeff Wilson if he gets called up from the practice squad. Now, we're not going to dive into the backfield, but Tevin Coleman, this high ankle sprain, obviously not good news, right? The high ankle sprain is a, is a killer for football players because, one, that means basically a minimum of – four weeks, correct me if I'm wrong, for him yep. to get back on the field. And that's probably on the earlier side of things, right? Correct. Yeah, four – a good a good rule of thumb is six weeks. Yep. Uh, four is really aggressive and early. Uh, six is more realistic. This is very painful. Uh, this is not something they can push through. Um, it will make it worse, and it will lead to a fracture like OBJ had. Uh, they, they have to be careful. Okay. They have to let him heal up appropriately. I, ha I remember this when, when, they, when he went down with an injury, I kind of chuckled because I, about a, two or three weeks ago, I, I had a Twitter battle with someone saying that, and I, and I said, I don't have any faith in Coleman. I want Brita because Coleman is injury prone. And then this happens in game one. I'm like, damn it. I hate when I'm right. But, um, do you though? Do you though? <laughs> It's, I just, I don't, I don't like when players get hurt. I mean, I, I prefer to be right than wrong, but I don't want them to get hurt as a result of it. Well, uh, either way. There is one silver lining. Uh, the Niners do have their bye week in week four. So that is one less oh, week. Wow. Yeah, there's always a few teams in week four. So that's one less week that Coleman won't be in yeah. their lineup, you know. Um, obviously not a lot of good comes from this. But for now, you know, you're, fire, you're firing up Brita. And you're kind of sitting on Coleman. To be honest, if I'm in a if I'm in a real tight pinch, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go crazy about people looking to move Coleman. Or I mean, by move, I mean drop him at this point because it's gonna be six weeks later probably before he's even thinking about being usable in your lineup. And if you have small benches or if there are players that are emerging quickly, like you know, this is what you got to do in order to survive and, and stay you know competitive in your league. It's like you can hope for Tevin Coleman. Best case scenario, he comes back, he rests it properly. And then he comes right back into that 1A role. But what happens if Brita blows up and does what fucking Austin Eckler's doing right now? You know what I mean? Like, he certainly is talented to do things like that. You don't just throw Tevin Coleman back into an 18-carry role or something. So there's a lot of outs in which this could go south for Coleman, and the first of which already happened, which was the injury. So, um, as always, we always talk about it. I'd, I'd rather be pessimistic when it comes to these injuries, especially these multi-week ones. I, I prefer to be realistic because I have the luxury of – being realistic, but yes, I, I am cautiously optimistic, but realistic. And, and usually that is viewed as pessimistic, but that's because I see this all the time and I actually know what it takes to get these people back right. as opposed to just saying, Oh, well, he said two weeks, he can say whatever he wants, but I know what it actually takes because this is what the data shows. Right. All right. Well, that's most of the guys we had on the list. I did want to bring up uh, Cam Newton for a second. Now, do you have Cam Newton on any of your teams, like a super flex or anything? Uh, no, no, I, I don't. I only ask because I figure you'd probably be more invested in the situation because I'm wondering if it was just a bad week one and it was just a bad performance from Cam. Uh, we didn't get any rushing from him, and it makes me think that maybe that has to do with the foot. 
uh, the shoulder, he didn't really throw downfield, but I'm not looking into it because I, I don't know, whatever the, it's just, it's Cam Newton. I, I think the shoulder is fine. Um, he was pissed off in the press conference when they were asking him about it. He's like, yeah, tell uh, whoever they're playing next, uh, def- defensive coordinator, not to play me deep and see what happens. So he seems confident in the shoulder. He just seems pissed off that it was a bad performance. I'm wondering if the rush, the rushing or lack of rushing that he had had anything to do with the foot that he recently injured. I definitely think it plays a role. I mean, right. there's no way that even at the mildest of mild foot sprains heals as quick as, as quickly as, as it did. Okay. He's still going to feel that he, he ended up doing better than I thought he would do. Uh, he, he, he kind of, uh, you know, screwed a couple of people uh, when not getting like a simple rushing touchdown or something that he, that he notoriously is known for. They're playing uh, tonight. What would be tonight sure. versus the bucks. So I expect him to be better. Yeah. Um, I would not be surprised if he, excuse me, runs a little more. He should put up better numbers and I hope, uh, Jameis and, and, and company put up better numbers to make them kind of compete with them because, God, they looked awful. Yeah, it was that, – that had me very, 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 very worried, but that's for a whole other episode. I don't think Jameis Winston is injured. I mean, Mike Evans looked like he was under the flu. And, you know, you, know what, you don't usually see players actually – their performance dip from being sick, right? Most of them tough it through. But Evans, you could tell, was a little – he was less than 100%. It sucks that he's on a short week because who knows if he's, you know, at 100% by then. But I think he should be because he had another four or five days of rest. So hopefully we see Tampa Bay kind of dial it up and Evans get back to form. Um, but those are the injuries that we got for you all today. If we missed out on any, make sure you drop them in the comments below and we'll try our best to get around to them. You could find Dr. Morse on his Patreon page, which is all of his exclusive content throughout the season, his rankings and other injury updates that you will get in real time. That is patreon.com slash the fantasy doctors, I believe, correct? Mm-hmm. Correct. Cool. Um, and then you can find my Patreon, obviously, at patreon.com slash BDGE. You will also get my weekly rankings, um, private live streams, things like that. But that is a way for you to support us. Obviously, we put a lot of time and work into providing y'all with the content that hopefully helps y'all bring home the chip this year in your fantasy football league. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We will be doing these injury reports every Thursday live from the HQ. Um, And that's all I got for us today. Dr. Morse, thank you again for joining us and uh, good luck in week two. Likewise. Take care, buddy.